Welcome back to CivilNet. I'm your host, Patrick Elliott. I'm uh, joined today by David Yang, a founder of 13 companies uh, such as Abby and uh, Nua.ai, and uh, you have some branches here in Armenia as well. Um, let's get the ball rolling, actually. Uh, you, um, you're developing some interesting projects over here. You've got uh, entirely AI uh, employees. You have robotic dogs, a house. Tell us everything about this project. Um, the, my latest company, Nua, is uh, developing so-called AI digital employees, AI hosts for restaurants, AI receptionists for, for hotels, for medical clinics. Uh, it's an it's a enormous, interesting new area. There will be 300 million non-humanoid, uh, non-human um, employees around us. So uh, we are happy that part of this development is happening in, in Armenia. Why, why Armenia specifically? What would you say is some of the advantages that Armenia has as opposed to other regions when it comes to AI development, robotics, science, technology? Um, Armenia has uh, actually very talented people, engineers. Um, I was born in Armenia and uh, I'm half Armenian, so maybe that uh, I'm a little bit biased, but uh, no, um, frankly speaking, uh, we have uh, engineers in many countries, but Armenia always was uh, 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 combining creativity and uh, technological mind. What are, what are some of the challenges that you see when it comes to developing high technology within Armenia, whether it's logistical or it's with the manpower that we have? Um, eventually, the challenge is uh, uh, the low uh, population. I mean, if you have only um, three million uh, citizens in the country and you have about uh, 50 to 100,000 um, engineers uh, in the country, the uh, well, potentially you have some limits. But um, but still, uh, the combination of uh, pe people being uh, advanced in uh, creative uh, uh, aspects in the mathematical rigorous thinking uh, still for us is a, is a changer. Uh, given the potential for AI and robotics in general, and you, you mentioned, right, you have, you're already creating AI employees, um, wouldn't it be interesting for Armenia to have the potential to overcome these population limitations given, given technology? Well, uh, I would say uh, actually directly opposite. I would say Armenia might become a big player in the world because the world will need uh, 300 million uh, so-called white-collar employees, uh, the um, uh, knowledge workers, and with the uh, emergence of one billion humanoid robots, uh, it will become another one billion blue-collar employees. So with that amount of talent, uh, non-biological talent in the world, someone must actually curate that and teach this uh, non-biological uh, workers. And Armenia you know, I might become a leader if Armenia will start to um, uh, educate uh, the students and uh, designers to create such, uh, such experience. It will be a new, it's, a, it's a becoming a new huge industry. Mm. Well, given that the theme for this year's WCIT conference is AI beyond limits but within ethics, aren't there ethical considerations if we're planning on a billion, a billion robots? Very, very important question. Um, in the U.S., there are 11 million uh, vacancies in entry-level job positions. Uh, humans do not work, do not want to work at $17 per hour, uh, would just pick them, pick, picking up the phones. Uh, this is the fact. Uh, humans are sometimes taking this job and, and quitting in four months. It, so it's a big problem for businesses. It, it's a big problem for, for consumers uh, that humans are trying to find something more interesting for them as workers. So that vacancies we are uh, filling with the non-human workers. David Yang, uh, welcome home, and thanks again for joining us on CivilNet. Thank you. Thanks again for watching.